The Blues Podcast. It's good. <laughs> sounds like sounds like a really um low. It sounds like a really low budget low budget podcast with this this intro. But I I like <laughs> I like I like the uh, the home mix effect. So. Uh, this mic actually now that we're <laughs> recording on is um, there's actually a mathematical equation I saw sometime sometime before I was a devotee. I saw some posts on Facebook or something, Instagram. That Your mic is completely entangled. Yeah, it's entangled. Like in, I'm entangled in the material world currently. <laughs> I saw some mathematical equation that the microphone, uh, when it's in a pocket, and it's actually there's actually a an equation to figure out that the how the microphone will entangle itself when kept in a small space like in a pocket hmm. it doesn't make sense you know you keep it there straight and then somehow or other it gets entangled so now that's what's happened to the microphone and now Pooja Pooja is unentangling the microphone and that is the duty and that is the duty of the spiritual guide <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah that's actually that's very nicely a Bridged, brid, nice bridge preaching, Babu. You, you nicely bridge preached into the topic of the of this week's bliss podcast. So I have to switch back to. So I have to switch back to the Facebook page so I can um, gratify my false ego and see myself on the Facebook live stream. And uh, yeah, then I can identify with this. This material, this material body, which is an illusion. <clears throat> so, uh, what are we, what are we talking about now? Spiritual guides. So, anyway, first of all, before we get into the topic of this week's podcast, Hare Krishna. Uh, my name is Maitreya Rishi Dasa, and I'm here with His Grace, Bridget Dasa, who is the founder of the Bhaktivedanta Lives and Sound Society, the organization which is uh, currently spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world under the guidance of His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Jai! Jai. Hari Bol. And uh, it's very ecstatic. Uh, we're currently based in London, Waterloo, London, right in the heart of Maya, in the, the, in, your face. in the face, in the cold heart. In your face! <laughs> in the cold heart of Maya. Uh, so we're, we're there as I'm getting distra- I'm now getting distracted by the Facebook stream. I got to turn this off. I got to go back to the voice recorder. Okay. So we're right there, um, in London and we're spreading Krishna consciousness as be- to the best of our abilities. We're going out on Harry Nam regularly, book distribution regularly. Of course, the efforts are being squandered by, not squandered, they're being impeded by the material nature. Actually, no, they're not being impeded because devotional service is a high tiki, a prati, a It doesn't, it doesn't depend on anything material. It's not impeded by anything material. So we go on. It doesn't matter. Even they try to lock us down. The government's trying to lock everyone down, put the, put the masks on. We went to the protests, the COVID protests. The cops are there. The armies of cops, 500 cops making big walls. There's tons of protest. There's somebody at the door, so now so many disturbances. Oh, the, co- the, the cops. Are- you just said the word cop, and immediately someone is ringing the doorbell, and they're gonna arrest you. The cops have bugs everywhere, and uh, so now the uh, so we went to those protests and we chanted at those protests. We didn't care. There were so many, uh, so many um, disturbances in one sense. There's like a lot, lots of people fighting and a very chaotic atmosphere. But we went there. And we chanted the holy name, and uh, it's yeah, the everything it goes on regardless of so many so-called uh, impediments. We go and we preach Krishna consciousness. So um, yeah, the bliss is really um, expanding here in London. People are very interested. They're taking the books. Uh, devotees are coming, and um, people are getting involved. What do you think about all this, Prabhuji? Uh. We have a. We just uh, distributed a book to a nice uh, guy from uh, Belgium, Mr. Quentin. Uh, he had a kind of a nice um, 
wait, kind of nice talk. So he's uh, listening right now, oh. Quentin. And um, yeah, it was a uh, an exciting uh, week. There was these uh, anti-lockdown protests. Uh, people who deny the COVID, the COVID deniers. They they're like called like that, COVID deniers. Virus con- d- deniers, virus deniers, yeah, like the vaccine, Bi- virus deniers, and uh, well, I personally, I have no idea what is going on, whether it's real, it whether it's not real. I have no clue whatsoever. I am I'm afraid to say anything. Uh, so um, we went there and uh, we were chanting the holy name of the Lord, the most reasonable thing you can do in any possible situation chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare oh sorry that was very nicely done no, that was nice we i think we got the full mantra there no yeah just seeing the chanting so often i don't even i don't even know the full mantra to repeat it you chant too much now uh, you have forgotten no, I, the mantra by chanting the mantra i must stop chanting so um uh, my Maitreya Prabhu went ahead and he checked out the protest. What was going on there? The protest was wild. There was really crazy. There were people... Uh, well, usually... Okay, there's a little background information required. Maybe I should take. There's a little background information required. Mm. The protests usually come down through the Hyde Park, which is kind of in the northern bank of London, and then they, uh, they march down through Trafalgar Square, and which is another very famous square in London and this art exit, whatever. So then they come down to the Downing Street and Downing Street is where the uh, currently Prime Minister Boris Johnson lives and they do a big, a big protest out there. So this time they decided to trick the cops and they did a flank and they went down to the Thames and tried to cross over the Westminster Bridge by flanking. They took a different route to march into the South Bank of London. And there was some, I don't know exactly why this was like a big problem, but the cops were sent to stop them. So the cops, they formed like a big line, you know, a chain line to block people from moving past. And people were getting really riled up that the cops were stopping. And and then there was kind of like a big outburst. Some people tried to get through the chain and there were punches thrown and people were thrown to the ground and arrested and screaming and throwing things and it was suddenly getting very wild and there were reinforcements and hundreds of cops a real army there of cops to come and stop the people so it was a very uh energetic atmosphere and i thought well this is a very nice setting to chant Hare krishna (laughs) so then prabhu came with the madanga and we set up the uh, we set up the shop and uh, yeah, then people started um, chanting with us and dancing, um, dancing for Krishna in front of the cops. And uh, it was very, like, very ecstatic. And uh, even though the cops were pushing us, pushing us over the bridge, we were on the bridge chanting. And even though the cops were pushing people further and further back, still the chanting was going on and people were joining and um yeah, then it, then we met some other devotees, Mac and Chaw, our dear Mac and Chaw Prabhu and Sabina Mataji, and then um, yeah, then we went to the London Eye. Piers Corbin, who is I, he's like a head pro, he's like a head figure in the protesting, and in the world of activism. Maybe if you're into activism, you've heard of Piers Corbin, and uh, he seems to be like a very uh, prominent character in that field. So he was also there, and he was also leading some protests by the London Eye. So we chanted with Piers Corbin. He was chanting. He was encouraging his group to chant through a megaphone. <laughs> we have footage of that. You can actually see it um, on our YouTube channel, Expand the Bliss. So he's an English uh, businessman and a weather forecaster, and uh, generally is uh, known as a conspiracy theorist. So he's currently rejecting the fact that COVID nine is COVID nineteen. Sorry, is a is an actual uh, virus, and he thinks it's a hoax. So he's very famous amongst these well, COVID deniers, and uh, yeah, he was there and he was chanting. 
getting a lot of uh, a lot of credit for Krishna, and um, yeah, it was really like a it was really like a congregational chanting there until the cops shut us down. No, the cops didn't shut us down, and he was uh, giving us the megaphone. He was giving us the megaphone, so it was a call and response, right? Yeah. Uh, he was given he was given megaphone so we could chant into the megaphone and then he would repeat himself the mantra Hare Rama Hare it was not picking up all the words but uh, it was trying so uh, and then the protesters because he's a big leader they would also uh, repeat Hare Krishna Hare and so the people were chanting and then the cops came yeah then the cops started realizing oh boy. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a real Lord Chaitanya. I'm sure one of those cops was thinking, this is just gonna be like Navadweep, Lord Chaitanya, hundreds of thousands. We gotta stop this immediately. The cops immediately they could perceive that. Oh my God, this is going to the Anatanivati stage. So uh, we must, you know, keep them the Kanishta because if there's many Madhya Madhikaris, then uh, the temple worship will be finished. Actually, all of the cops were very, very perceptive and learned in Shastra. They were caste Brahmins disguised as cops, and uh, they were trying to shut down the whole event. So, um, yeah, that was very disastrous. Anyway, no, it wasn't disastrous. It was wonderful. And the Hari Nam Sankirtan went on. So, I don't know how we got to this particular uh, topic. We were discussing the bliss. The bliss news. That was the bliss news. Dun -dun 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 yeah, that yeah, all the all the jingles are now gone, so we have <laughs> we have no our library is empty for jingles. Oh, we, we have a new one. Oh, yeah. the Bliss Podcast. It's good. <laughs> so this is just going to be our uh, jingle for everything now. Bliss news, everything. Uh, yeah. So oh, there's another one. The computer's glitching out. Oh. Did it? Did it? That was nice. I like the do 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 do. So um, yeah. Okay. Now we can probably get into the topic of the week, which is being a spiritual guide. How to be a spiritual guide. Now I'm very unqualified as a spiritual guide, so I don't feel exactly um, qualified to just to, to at least lead the discussion on this uh topic. So I I hand over the the microphone to Prabhu after asking him a question. Prabhu, what, who, uh, who qualifies to be a spiritual guide? How does one qualify himself to be a spiritual guide? Who can be a spiritual guide? Um, according to the Vedic um, Krishna conscious um, definition, the guide must first of all guide himself. That is the first um, idea that we should get. He should first of all guide himself because if he can't guide himself, how will he guide the others? So the modern politicians, for example, they can't guide themselves. They're a mess. They're messed up in the head. And they're leading the countries and then you see that there's a chaos everywhere. So uh, Srila Bhagoswami, he says in the Nectar of Instruction, is that one should be a perfect master of the tank, you should not eat anything unless it is offered to Krishna. No cheating, no chocolates in the pockets. <laughs> chocolate bars, kinder, kinder surprise. Secret chocolate. secret chocolate pocket, no secret chocolate pocket. Yeah, no hot dogs, <laughs> no pizzas. <clears throat> well, you can make a pizza for Krishna, right? Uh, tank, belly, genital. Right, if you can control the tongue, then you control the belly also, and the genital automatically also follows. Anger, speech, and what is the other one? The six, six uh, uh, forces. You must know this. I, oh. I, I need to study more closely. I yeah, I'm, I I don't know the six one. Sorry. The speech, he should not offend by the speech, yeah. should control his speech, yeah. he should control anger, yeah. and he should control, no, no, he should, he should, 
he should control his um I, I really don't know. Yeah, I, I'm I'm spaced. Oh, I I'm hoping that you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't want to I don't want to speculate exactly, so I guess we're going to Oh, you do. Okay. Okay, you know after you after you find out. <laughs> so I'm gonna get. I'm gonna do a speculation, philosophical speculation. Yeah. I really don't know. I I. He control his greed. I don't know. <laughs> so bad. His mind. His mind. Mind control. His mind. Mantra. We chanting the mantra to control the mind. So mind, anger, mind, anger, uh, speech, belly, genital, tongue. Very good. So um, and, and then Rupa Goswami says that uh, uh, such a sober person is qualified to make disciples all over the world. So this is the definition of a spiritual guide. We see that the so-called spiritual guides, they're like the, the complete opposite. They're very expert in misusing the genital, misusing the uh, the tongue, eating any sort of rubbish, garbage, a restaurant, business. They can't control their mind, they're speculating. they saying things that are completely in contradiction to the Vedic scriptures, Shastra. And so on, so on. So um, this is the first thing. If you want to be a spiritual guide, if you have that audacity <laughs> <laughs> to become a spiritual guide, then you better follow these these guidelines. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. Let's say you qualify as a spiritual guide. How are you how are you get, how are you guiding people? What are you guiding them towards? What is the prayogen? What is the goal? Who? Yeah. Well, you should guide them to Krishna. If you're guiding them without mentioning even Krishna's name, you're guiding them to uh, so all sorts of bogus things, then you're also not a spiritual guide. So you must guide them to Krishna. It's like Prabhupada says that, um, I don't say that I am God, I say that Krishna is God and you, so you should worship Krishna. The others, they say, I am God. Everyone is... Say, I am God, I am important. Right? Just like you see this uh, Sadguru, right? It's Sadguru, Sadguru, everywhere, Sadguru, and no Krishna. There's no Krishna, it's just a, a one one YouTube video, right? Why, why Krishna? Why Krishna is blue. He has a video like that? Yeah. He explains why Krishna, why Krishna is blue. Well, he does many things, you know, he does rascaldom, interpretations of the Bhagavad Gita. And, you know, he's trying to explain that Bhagavad Gita and, you know, the storyline and why Krishna is blue, this kind of nonsense kind of thing. Krishna is there, but Krishna is a famous historical personality at best. Yeah. So that's Raskodam. You know, the Krishna very clearly establishes in the Bhagavad Gita, which Sadhguru is so-called studying and preaching and telling people to read. If you read it at all attentively or at all, at all, You'll see, it's very obvious Krishna is making it clear that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Oh, what is that shloka? Dhananjaya. Dhananjaya. Uh, everything is strong on me. I need to put the microphone closer because no one can hear the beautiful Sanskrit coming out of your mouth. Yeah, I just want to say one more thing that uh, the spiritual guide should be the perfect disciple of a spiritual guide so if you don't have a spiritual guide you can never become a spiritual guide yourself you can but it's not gonna work just like if you want to operate right you want to operate you want to be a surgeon so you must approach uh, a qualified surgeon to teach you right you can read books that's okay but Unless there's a, a qualified surgeon who will supervise how you're doing, then, then you can create lots of damage. So being a spiritual guide is just like a surgery in one sense. You have to, you know, pull out the 
the anartas or the, the bad things, the ego, pull out from the heart of people. You have to analyze and pull out and it hurts, right? You have to give them some um, anesthesia. So we have the anesthesia of Krishna Prasadam and the Maha Mantra. And when people are chanting and dancing and, and feasting, then they become qualified to uh, receive the guidance and the analysis of the spiritual master, which is not very pleasant to hear. You know, we, we are condemned in one sense, those who are in this world, to suffer continuously. And it's only because we want to suffer, that's why we're here. Because we, we don't want to surrender to Krishna. So that is our greatest misery. Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. So those who do not want Krishna, they don't want reservoir of all pleasure, they must suffer. This is um, the fundamental situation, fundamental teaching. If you don't serve Krishna, then you must suffer. If you serve Krishna, you are always in happiness and joyfulness. So, but how can I know if, if a spiritual guide is qualified? Because, I mean, aren't there all these qualities that he can control the senses? And let's group it under one thing because I don't want to have to be tested on it whether I remember all those things or not. So, if you kind of if you think about it it's almost like a subjective thing because someone could also make a show or i mean it's also difficult to test whether someone is controlling his mind or so what how, how do these things manifest and how can i know myself whether one of these things because this is my first question was more how do you qualify to be a spiritual guide and how my next question is how does someone know who the spiritual guide is he should accept because that was in relation to your previous point uh, he's always talking about Krishna. That's like Srila Prabhupada. Always talking about Krishna. Not mundane things. Mundane psychology and philanthropic activities. And, you know, these are all distractions. They're like piles of dirt. They distort our consciousness, pure consciousness. So, a bona fide guide is always talking about Krishna. Nothing but Krishna. It's actually very difficult to talk about Krishna. We have no attraction. We, even when we talk about Krishna, again the mind is oscillating towards material subject matters. So um, we have to hear from a pure devotee to understand, to get the taste of Krishna Kata discussion about Krishna. We have to hear from a pure devotee. Then we can learn how to talk about Krishna. Isn't it contradictory to say that Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasures, but then say that it's very difficult to talk about Krishna and stuff like this? No, it's not contradictory. Uh, that pleasure, the reservoir of all pleasure, is um, spiritual pleasure. Of course, Krishna is also the reservoir of the material pleasure, but that material pleasure is nothing but suffering. When you think about it, it's, it's, it's illusory. You know, it's just like, uh, if you win one million dollars and then you lose that lottery ticket then you suffer so much if you didn't win you wouldn't suffer but because you win, you won and you lost the ticket you were suffering greatly so in the same way because we identify with the material pleasure and we are addicted to material pleasure we are suffering and if we understand that, oh, there's no need of material pleasure, then we're enjoying with Krishna. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's like the, um, the, uh, I was just actually, I was on, on the interwebs and I saw some article that some guy had won 10 million pounds jackpot lottery. And the article was called How I Blew. 10 million pound jackpot lottery so yeah i was thinking i had this kind of realization that material enjoyment so-called is actually it's anxiety through and through it's anxiety in the beginning because 
okay, let's just use a lottery ticket as an example because that's kind of the sorry, that's the example that we're using. You have uh, anxiety in the beginning because you're working up to, um, you know, you're you're in anxiety to get the ticket or to get the correct ticket and to work hard to get the money to buy the ticket, and then you're in anxiety while the TV show is going on and they're rolling off the numbers and you want to get it. And then you're in anxiety because you don't get the lottery. And then if you get the lottery, then you're in anxiety how to spend the money or how to protect the money. And then when you lose the money, you're in anxiety. Or So so basically, it doesn't matter which way you look at it or what you do, you're always in anxiety. And you can take this and put it to any material pleasure. Uh, it's always uh, the cause of anxiety. Uh, because also, the, I guess the main reason is because it's temporary. So that reservoir of all pleasure is also uh, the reservoir of pleasure because it's eternal. The never-ending pleasure, the service is eternal. So uh, that's why it's never frustrating also. Jai Haribol. Okay, a resounding, a resounding Jai Haribol. Thank you, very encouraging. Hey, now, one, another interesting phenomenon is that nowadays everyone wants to be the spiritual guide. Yeah. Like we saw so many YouTube videos, everyone wants to guide and you listen to me and, and I'll give you this guidance and this and that. And um, Especially now with YouTube and Facebook and the internet, it becomes very uh, attractive to guide. And uh, um, most of the people are completely... Uh, guiding in a nonsense way, uh, guiding how to enjoy the material world nicely, how uh, we can become the controllers of our minds and our destiny, right? There's this... The law of attraction. Huh? The law of attraction is... That's, ex that's exactly, that's exactly what I, I meant. Yeah, this, there was a book like that, right? Yeah, there's many, many, many books like this. Many books like this. But this is also like the founding principle of pretty much all modern spiritual guides is that if you follow me then i'll give you what you want you can get whatever you want from me it's such a garbage you know how people are cheated by this so-called spirituality it's unbelievable how how cheap they are the people you know they don't think and they they uh huh yeah yeah they cheat. They they think that oh, um, I will now become God. So these so-called guides they tell them oh, if you want to be God, if you want to control your destiny, if you want lots of money, then you have to practice this process and that process, and you just be in the moment and do this and do that and so many things. And they all charge exuberant prices. Uh, fees for their sessions and you know people think that oh because I paid so much money then it must be bona fide so um, on the other hand uh, the uh, our Krishna consciousness movement is very nice because at this point Srila Prabhupada a bona fide spiritual master distributed himself all around the world through his vibration, through his books, through his instructions. So everyone can become a spiritual guide, a guru, spiritual master, everyone, whoever. Whoever uh, is enthusiastic, he can become a guide simply by reading Prabhupada's books. Our process is very simple. You hear and you repeat. <clears throat> you don't have to manufacture any knowledge. It's very simple. You hear and repeat whatever you have heard. Try to understand also, of course, but uh, simply by repeating, you can become a spiritual guide. Just like a child. The child doesn't understand what is a, a microphone. But if I say, this is a microphone, and the child repeats, this is a microphone, then he is actually passing on a bona fide information. He doesn't have to know what is a microphone. We don't have to know exactly Every single energy of Krishna, how it expands, it's impossible to know Krishna in completeness. But whatever the spiritual master says, <clears throat> if we repeat that, then we can give others the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. 
So everyone should preach. Everyone should become a guru and preach on Srila Prabhupada's behalf. This is this would be wonderful. This would, Prabhupada says we need millions of gurus. People are so misguided. They need to know about Krishna. So man, woman, it, whoever, animal, dog, whoever you are, preach Krishna consciousness. This will improve the situation in this world tremendously. Srila Prabhupada has given us the, uh, the philosophy and the uh, uh, elements we can implement the, the methods how to survive in this world nicely, how to survive, how to live peacefully. He gave everything, all the guidance is in his books. You simply have to re uh, read again and again, read. And if you don't understand, read them again. Also, you can listen to the classes, you can read the letters, you can... Uh, Listen to the morning walks with Srila Prabhupada that are especially, at least for myself, especially delicious um, conversation, room conversations. So all recorded. A Mahabhagavat, a pure devotee of God, uh, has come and left behind all these great instructions about how to develop God consciousness and how to preach Krishna consciousness here in this world. So, um, uh, this is required. So, of course, in the present situation in our world, it's very difficult to read these books and our mind has been almost uh, wired in that way. So, we don't feel any pleasure by reading uh, books about God. We, we have been conditioned. So, we have to... Um, uh, a little struggle, we have to put a little bit uh, sacrifice. Srila Prabhupada even says you minimize your eating and sleeping. If you have time to sleep and eat, well, why not find time to read about Krishna? Uh, so, because people say that um, um, I have no time. Prabhupada called, uh, calls this the modern disease. I have no time. No time. The disease of a modern man. But if you have time to eat and sleep, then why don't you find time to uh, read Prabhupada's books? We can always minimize our eating and we can always minimize sleeping. We eat so much. So much unnecessary. And we sleep also so much unnecessarily. <clears throat> so it comes back to that shloka Srila Rupa Goswami instructs in Nectar of Instruction. One who can tolerate the urges of the tongue, belly, genital, mind, anger. Uh, and the other one I'm, I'm forgetting. He can become a guru. And... He can make disciples all around the world. Many disciples. So, also it's not a point to have many disciples. That is not a point. You can tell something about Krishna and he actually collects spiritual credit. This is also mentioned in the Shastra. Uh, it is not so easy to come to become a devotee right away. One must collect spiritual credit. So those people who, let's say now, they hear the Maha Mantra for the first time on the street. Devotees are chanting on the street and they hear it for the first time. They have collected one pound, one dollar, one euro. <clears throat> and Krishna will guide them again to get more uh, exposure to Krishna. So they meet a devotee who uh, shows them the book, but they don't take it. But um, the credit is counted. So then the next time they uh, uh, actually get the book. And the next time they get an invitation to visit the temple and they, uh, they agree to come. So it, it comes gradually, gradually, gradually. We have to purify. We're not um, uh, ready to approach Krishna. 
we have so many, so we're so much covered by maya, by illusion. So it is only because of the devotees, the devotees who go out and they try to uh, buck the non-devotees to become devotees. It is only by the mercy that people are becoming aware of Krishna consciousness movement. Otherwise, they'll be uh, stuck in darkness for good. So, um, it is not so easy to become a spiritual guide on the same level as Srila Prabhupada. The spiritual master absorbs the karma of a disciple. So, uh, because uh, a pure devotee is fully uh, devoted to Krishna, Krishna actually takes that karma. He doesn't have to suffer. But if the spiritual master is not pure, then that turns into a, a karmic reaction. If he accepts disciples and these disciples are nonsense, then he has to suffer all their sins. So it's a very precarious position of a spiritual master. One should not claim to be uh, on a platform that he is not. There are three types of devotees, Kaneshta Arikari, which is a beginner. Madhyamarikari in the middle stage and then Uttamarikari. One should know his own position. He should understand, oh, I am a Kanishta Arikari, I am Madhyamarikari, I am Uttamarikari. And um, he should not imitate a devotee who is situated on a superior platform. Otherwise, that would uh, bring about uh, fall down. He falls down from the position he is in if he tries to artificially imitate. So, um, <clears throat> this we have to be very careful that we don't take up any unnecessary position that is not meant for us. The best is to direct people to Srila Prabhupada because Srila Prabhupada is crystal clear. Nitya Siddha Mahabhagavat. It is crystal clear. And those who have doubts about this, they're demons, they're rascals. Don't hear from them, they're nonsense. Completely misguided by Maya. It is very obvious. The whole world can actually appreciate what Prabhupada has done for this Krishna consciousness movement. So, um, I think that will be it. My Chair Prabhu left for now. Um, so, um, this was a podcast about a spiritual guide and how to become a spiritual guide and how to avoid different... Um, problems that could arise from such engagement in Krishna consciousness. Hopefully it is in, always in Krishna. Without Krishna consciousness, you can't guide anyone to anywhere. It is a sheer waste of time. Okay, so thank you very much for listening and I will talk to you tomorrow, uh, next week. Thank you very much. Uh, Hare Krishna. Jai Shla Prabhupada.